president of baseball operations, Dave Dombrowski, who we were just talking about, kind enough to join us. And, and Dave, you know, this game is so interesting today. We talk so much, and it, that's what makes the sport fun, right? About uh, moves and about different strategies. But look, you're you're the perfect blend of old school and new school. And when people talk about you, they talk about the same thing with Alex Cora: the communication. Nobody better about it, right? So, how have you managed to take old school and new school with your new manager and combine that where it works for everybody? Well, that's a great word, and I think any successful business communication is a key for it. And so you need to talk things through at times. But you also have to have an open mind because you're always trying to get better. So if anybody can get you better in anything you're doing, it's just like these guys. If somebody tells them something as great of players as they were, and somebody says, well, you know, if you maybe you do this and they get a little bit better, they're open-minded. My job's a lot different than that. But having great people around you that keep you open-minded towards ideas and blending it with the experience that I've been fortunate enough to gain and having good people around me, you try to integrate all of that to make it work, and then you have somebody like Alex Cora, who's so open-minded to all of that, and he's contemporary on everything that he does. So you're in a position where it's great communication, and, I, and I'm also, I know maybe old-fashioned in this regard, but to me, if you have a manager, you let him, need to let him run the club. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> there it is, folks. And so to me, we communicate every day, Alex and I do. But when it comes to making the lineup out or running, the, he gets all the information that he wants from all the analytical, the statistical. He's very open-minded to it. All the scouting reports. That's his job. And and how do you gain the respect of your clubhouse if they know upstairs you're making those decisions or sending those mis decisions down? And so you need to have somebody like that. And. If you don't, you probably have the wrong manager. And in my mind, he's an outstanding manager. He has somebody like even Tony La Russa on our staff that he listens to. And where do you get that type of experience? But it's combined in all of that and somebody that's open-minded enough like Alex to do that. Wow. Dave, I, I think you're the unsung hero here. And I'm a huge fan of yours going back to the Marlins days. I'm a Miami guy. Carrie, your wife, who was an anchor in Miami, was in my house the day I got drafted interviewing me. So I've been a big fan of both That's of you. That's crazy. That's, That's crazy, crazy, right? That's crazy. Just three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels like that. Let's right? keep it that way. way. <laughs> but, but, but when I think about you, again, you said it best, old school, new school. When I spent time with Alex Cora this year, he said Dave is the best, and Dave is the reason why we're here. He said Dave gives me the information, exactly what you said, but never once has he messed with my lineup, has he told me who to pick. He makes suggestions, and I listen to Dave, but he allows me free autonomy to go out and manage this team. Where does that confidence come from for you? 30 years, 21 years between championships for you. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, long time coming, um, and a wonderful feeling. Doesn't get any better, as you guys know. It's a situation where... Uh, I just think the experience that you gain in the game, and you're you're very. I've been very fortunate in my career to be around a lot of good baseball people. People in the front office. Roland Heeman was my mentor, a great baseball man. Bill Veck owned the team at that time. I went on Jerry Reinsdorf owned the White Sox, and and going on and having good baseball people around me, that you're in a position where you learn certain things. But I was around Tony La Russa when he first started managing. I was around Jim Leland for all these years, and. They need to be in charge. They're smart. I mean, I hate to say this. They're smarter than me when it comes to running a game. That's just the way it is. And and they, what's interesting about the game is, you know, you guys sit around here. You put a guy on, sec, on first base in the eighth inning. It's a two-to-two -two game. You might say bunt. You might say hit and run. You might say steal. You might say do nothing. Analytics says hit a home run. <laughs> That's right. Hit yeah. a home run. But you know what? Those great managers, the LaRusses, the Lelands, the Joe Torres, the um, Bobby Coxes, they may all disagree too. Right. But, but they have a reason why they're going to do it. They don't shoot from the hip. They know, and yet, I think what's so imp impressive to me about Alex Cora and all those guys, they get all that information, but they manage with their instincts and gut on the bench, too. So they see something develop, and all of a sudden they say, you know what, this guy's stuff's not quite as good. And I'm getting them out. I don't think this is a good matchup. I think this is a great matchup. And you've got to let them do those things because they work hard. They're there in the dugout. And I think those are things that I learned throughout yeah. the years that you just have to let them do it. Love it. Listen, I'm going to share a little uh, uh, behind the scenes secret with y'all right here. I played Major League Baseball for 20 years. And when Dave Dombrowski, this gentleman, take over the Red Sox, I had never seen a GM that worked the hardest he worked. Mm. He go to every road trip with us. 
He is in the clubhouse every day because he want to figure things out. He want to get the ball club better. Watching the ball club winning the World Series right now, my friend, the minute you take over the Red Sox, I know it was going to happen soon because the hard work and the work ethic that you have and, and, and the way you embrace all of us. I was telling the guys early today that the first thing you did when you take over the Red Sox was pulling me and Pedroia and ask us what we need to do to win a World Series. Wow. What, what did they say, Dave, when you had that meeting with them? What did, what did they tell you? Well, first of all, both of them were extremely um, thankful to have the opportunity to get feedback. Sure, of course. And they talked about communication. They talked about the good young players that we had. But they also talked about we needed some pitching at the time. Yep. So, but well, they had, and, and they also told me one thing, too, that I think you can only experience if you're there, um, the exceptional nature of playing in Boston mm. and how it's different than some other places. And they're right. Mm -hmm. Because the focus, the passion, which is great, but you better have thick skin if you're going to survive because you're in a position where there's a lot of daily criticisms that come attached to it, a lot of positives, too. And they gave me the insight into those type of things. Dave, I watch you build winners year in and year out. I mean, from Miami to, to Detroit. I mean, you had a run in Detroit that was ungodly. I got to witness that every night. You didn't win the championship, but you go come right over to Boston. You figure it out quickly. What has been the difference with the analytics in the past and they are now? Because everything has totally changed. I want to know from you, you've been building winners forever. Are you taking the old school with the new school and Jeez. really get it in and get it out of there? <laughs> you got to bring the family up. Come on in here. Of course. The family. This is the key yeah. right here behind Dave. <laughs> yes, right here. sir. This is, this is the, I, I think, you know, it's interesting. And, you know, it's interesting because I got married later in life, okay? I got married when I was 39. Okay. You were too busy, man. <laughs> I was too busy. I was baseball. Building winners. But I think one of the things are when you have young children, it keeps you younger, too. So you're always contemporary on things taking place. But, you know, it's inter analytics, and people are extremely, extremely intelligent. I mean, the information that they give you. But in many ways... It's some of the same things that I've learned throughout the years, maybe a little bit more sophisticated with different terminology. Okay. So, I mean, that's like somebody was talking the other day. Well, managers have been platooning guys. I mean, I, we were talking about Renneke and Lowenstein back with the Orioles back in the early 80s. I mean, most people haven't even heard of those guys. And it's like, yeah, well, they were, they were, they were doing that. And they were, hitting, they were breaking our heart when I was with the White Sox at that time. So... But you know what? There's a lot of good stuff that comes from it, too. But you need to remember, for me, that you need to – it's a people's game. It's a player's game. And if you got good players, you have a good chance to win. Right. And if you have good people in your organization. And so it's combining everything that you have. But it's also – we have great people in our organization behind – it's not me. It's the, the scouts that we have, the player development, the international operation, our front office people. And they all work together, too which is great. And when you've been part of our meetings. I was talking to Pedro over there before. We have an organizational meeting in 10, we'll have 25 people in there, and they all give their opinions from hey, all different aspects. Hey, Dave, they're saying we're running a little bit on time, but I yeah. want to ask you one last question. Uh-oh. Not uh -oh. so serious. If this guy gets a ring, tell me why he deserves <laughs> <Yeah>. a ring. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, he'll squeeze me in <laughs> I got to be honest, it's the first time he hasn't talked in a month. <laughs> hey, or I, I, I get or you. Eating. I get you later, bro. Right. <laughs> Dave, he has Dave. been your biggest chili throughout the playoffs, I, I can tell you that much. Right, come on. Thank I'm you. going with a hey, team bro. that won 200 games I ain't this what year. You say, man. Hey, come on. Come on. This, this is how we roll right here. <laughs> this is how we roll right here. <laughs> Dave Dombrowski. I love it. Dave, congratulations. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. Go enjoy with your beautiful Appreciate family. It. Dave Dombrowski, the architect Dave. of these Red Sox. Congrats once again. Pleasure, guys. Awesome. Uh,